little fairy, fairy orchids. Aren't they just divine? Hello, I'm Shirley and welcome to my channel. Um, today I thought I've had some presents for Mother's Day. Two beautiful little tulumias. And if you don't know what tulumias are, they're teeny tiny little orchids. And on my uh, right here, you can see this lovely Philanopsis and she's flowering absolutely beautifully now. She's um, quite old, she might be 10 years, I I've lost track completely. And then my other one is around the same age, maybe a little bit younger and, and she's a beautiful lilac. Lilac with lots of little spots. I might be able to do a close up for you. You can see them in a little moment. Um, but for now, I've never had tulumias before. They're almost like little fairy, um, fairy orchids, aren't they just divine? And they have wonderful, beautiful little flowers. Um, and this one is the cardinal bird. And she has quite a lot of red with some yellow in her colouring. And I can't remember what this one was, but I will um, find out. This one is um, Jarrack Firm Fine Point, it's called. Um, so I will put little pictures up uh, of these as they are and as they will be the flowers with the flowers later on. So you can see, but they produce quite a lot of flowers. They're regular flowering orchids. And um, my natural orchids here, the, the, the larger ones, they, they have so many flowers. Can you see that bulb there, that bud I mean? And they just go on for like months at a time. I mean, four months and I'll still be looking at a few of them. So they're really beautiful to have if you haven't got any orchids. So right now, um, I've never done this before. Um, so I'm a bit nervous about it. I'm gonna cut them open very, very gently. Um, they're wrapped up um, in some like tissue and cellophane and what have you. And I've got a couple of little pots, the only pots I've got at the moment. So I'm gonna put them in them for now. And then I'm gonna find them some special pots for perhaps a couple of weeks time and repot them then. But for now, I just wanna get them out of this wrapping and um, give them, you know, a little watering uh, and see what I've got. Um, just in case the roots are rotting or drying up. I mean, I just don't know because you can never see. Uh, Mother's Day was a couple of days ago and I haven't been able to get to them until now. I mean, the sun is going down, so I hope that the light will be okay for our video. So, sorry this is taking a moment. But they're basically like Phalaenopsis orchids. And if you don't know about orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids are the ones that you see in most of your garden centres and flower shops. They're the regular ones and they are because they're easy to care for. You still have some problems with them, of course, but they are generally, whoops, I've got to be very careful here, very um, easy to care for. As I say, I've had this one for sure 10 years. It could be, it could be a bit more even. And um, when you come to water these plants, uh, less is best unless you're in a hot climate. Now this is how they come to you with lots and lots of roots. Those roots they're quite good aren't they? I can't see any black on them right now but they've put them in this little structure uh, a little like a little basket. I'm a bit nervous to get them out of that basket just now but I know you should get them out of the basket so I'm just Having a look, deciding whether to or not take them out of the basket. I think I might just grow them on a bit longer 
in the basket in these pots a few weeks a month a bit more make sure they're established and then I, I might do another video and um, take the basket off and to take the basket off you've got to literally cut through the holes of the plastic maybe a few times all the way around and ease and gently take it off so it doesn't break these exceptionally fine giddy fairy like little baby roots and I mean they are just just beautiful so I'm going to pop that on there for now I'm just going to have to throw things down because I've nowhere else to put them I've got a bag on the floor to pick up all my bits and I'll open this one up as well and so these little tulumias are just like Phalaenopsis. Um, so they're like Phalaenopsis, they are good in your home. Um, they take the same kind of temperatures that we would want in our living rooms. Um, but it's not clever to put them in full sun, just not clever at all. I mean, some plants, they say, don't put them in full sun. And that's true, uh, but you know, they'll survive, uh, but these won't. They just won't. They, I don't think they will. Um, so what you just do, they're pretty hardy, tough little things that they are. I've, I've read about them in the past and, you know, done a bit of research and they are hardy little plants. Um, so what you do, if you don't know, it's the same with the Phalaenopsis, even though they're quite the hardiest, one of the hardiest, um, is that you must have some kind of netting between the sun out there and your darling little orchids, whether it's the larger ones or, or these. Um, and what you do, got to be careful, um, is you have like a net, a sheer net, something that's gonna break up or just take off the edge of that sun, because they need the light. They definitely do need the light. So with me, I mean, I suppose a west facing window would be probably the best. Uh, but for me, I, I can't very well do that because the windows that are facing the west for me uh, are in another part of the house. I'd, I'd never see them basically, sort of bedrooms and things. So this one, um, these, I prefer I've got them in the south facing window, which is basically in my dining area of my house by the kitchen and they do look quite splendid there. And I will do another video which shows my orchid collection because I have got an orchid collection um, which has been going on for a few years on and off. You see them in the uh, garden centres and you get excited and you want to bring them home um, and then it's like oh goodness how do I look after these are they you know what kind of plant are they and all this sort of thing because you can see that they're, they're not your average plant so it's always best to do your research anyway I'm just going to cut that off it's a bit of wire I don't know what it's doing there really take it off it doesn't break anything so what we're going to do is we're going to pop them up, the smallest one, I'll put in the smallest pot, and we're going to start with some sparkly moss and some bark. Chippings. And I'm going to put some bark chippings in the bottom and a little bit of sparkly moss. Now the sparkle moss is going to hold some of the water as you water them. So there'll always be a little moisture for them to take on. It's a bit awkward now, I'm trying to find a space for everything. But um, you need the bark for the air. So what I am going to be doing is buying some little pots that are plastic and those little pots, I'm going to make sure they've got holes 
in them. And um, they're very tiny, really. Very, very diddy. Have a bit of time to, to do this, really, because it's you can't really rush it because they're so small. And they're not always easy to get hold of. My, I don't, I'm not actually sure where my son has got these from. I think he got them from the UK in the end. But it's not... It was never that easy to get hold of these. I couldn't get them for some time. So we're going to get some of that bark in there. Plant these little darlings up. They need the air. Orchids need air. If you've got an orchid you've bought from a flower shop and it's got orchid soil, I, I just wouldn't bother with it. Uh, I would get it out and, and get yourself some spackle moss and some bark for orchids. And there's loads, I mean you can get them from the garden centres so there's no problem for you to get them. And then the bark, it does retain some water, uh, a little, but it also creates air holes. So tap it to let the air into you. So Alexa going off in the background, if you did hear her then, I don't know what she's telling me now, probably feed the dogs or something like that. I don't know whether you've got Alexa, but I find her very good, reminds me of all sorts of things. It's just when I want her to be quiet, I often forget to quiet her down. So I'm going to leave that like that, it's nice and fluffy and loose and aerated. And there's a little sparkle moss there to hold some moisture, but not flood it, because we don't want that. Um, and then I'm going to put it in one of these little pots that I bought from Amazon, they're really cheap. Um, but they're great, they're great, because when you have your little plants and you just want something small, these don't cost an awful lot. They've got little holes at the bottom, and you can just pop them in like that. Look at that, it's, it's lovely, isn't it, Diddy? And then it's got its little drainage sources. So I find these are just great for the smaller plants when you get them and you bring them home. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave like this for a couple of weeks and a little bit of water I'm going to drizzle on and I'm going to just drizzle it on well and then I'm going to leave it to drain totally out and keep checking to make sure that all the water's gone. And then I'll leave it for maybe five days, maybe a week, and then I'll give it some more water and do the same thing. So um, there we go, in his little bed for a few weeks, and then what I'll do is in a few weeks time, I'll get some little pots about that size that are clear plastic with little holes all the way around the side, and if I can't get them, then I'll, I'll make little holes with the hot iron um, so that air can get through and around. And then I'll use the same potting mix that I've just done now, maybe add a little bit more, and then leave them another couple of months or so um, and see how they go. But you've got to watch these through the summer because they are so, so little. And, um, you know, it's easy. You get a lovely warm day, you're enjoying yourself, and, and they're drying up. <laughs> So you can't have them soaking wet, don't get the wrong idea, that cannot happen, um, you don't want that with your orchids, uh, it's different from some of your other plants, that's why I'm saying if they come in soil, then the best thing you can do is gently take them out, but don't take them out until you are prepared, because look at me, I'm rushing now, because we're doing this that little baby, little darling, little gorgeous little thing in here. And I know she's going to give me lots of lovely flowers. And the flowers are bigger than you think. And they're so colourful and there are a lot of them and they flower regularly. I can't quite remember how often, but apparently they flower regularly. So if you are interested, do your research as well, because I've only just had these, so, and it is a weekend, and I'm in a rush, and I just wanted to get them potted up, you see. If I'd have had more time, I could have got all the finer details for you. 
Um, I better not put too much in. I don't want to be too wet. Just a little bit. Get some more bark in there. Put more bark than sphagnum moss because the sphagnum moss holds the water. And we only want them to retain a, a moisture kind of level. We don't want them soaking. Um, this is why I keep saying, I keep going back to the same thing, if, if you buy them in soil, then get them out. Get yourself some bark and some sphagnum moss. Whatever kind of orchid it might be. But different orchids require different types of bark. And that's why you do need to do your research for the orchid that you choose. But these are all my babies from Mother's Day and I don't want them to be sitting there much longer. So I thought before the sun goes down, I'd just pop them up and just show you what I'm doing. In case you want to do the same thing. a rather brief video really but there is only two of them but you never know I may have some more in the future if I get on with them and you know according to the powers that be they're they're very hardy and they're, for their size you don't have to worry too much that you know they're small and they're going to die off on you as so long as you put them in a nice spot lots and lots of sunlight like your orchids they must have sunlight, a lot of sunlight. So a south facing window is okay, or a west. But what is the difficulty with the orchids is you must have some kind of net to break up that sun. They cannot stand the onslaught of the full sun. That just cannot do that. So you must think, think this through a little bit. Because even if you pull them away from your window and you've got a really hot day, that sun will come through that window, even if they're away, and they can get scorched. And you know, look at those tiny little leaves. I mean, you know, you've got to protect them a little bit, haven't you? And same with your large ones. I mean, I've got a bit of sun discolouring on one or two leaves here from last summer, even though, um, as far as I remember, I'd always kept my curtain closed when it's a, a beautiful sunny morning. I'd leave it open. And then just around 11, 12, something like that, just as the sun's getting really hot, then I'd pull my curtain across so that they don't get that, that really sharp, hot sun that can burn them. So I'm, I'm in my conservatory today. Um, I want to do more videos in my conservatory because it's so nice now we're getting this sunshine. And um, so I'll see you again. I'm going to write up my little tags for my new little darlings and um, pop them in there in a minute. So for now I'll just say bye and um, I hope you experiment with some orchids if you haven't had any. Um, this one, just look at that, just look at that. You could just be in Hawaii or somewhere, couldn't you? You look at it, it's just totally divine. And she, she's quite beautiful as well absolutely lovely so with that then i'll say bye for now and see you again next time bye <laughs>